Hey guys, welcome to another episode. My name is Lindsay. We are Gypsy Elk Retrievers. Today I'm going to talk about the tools that we use to train dogs. Okay. Oh yeah, I can feel that. Okay, so if you're already a subscriber, perfect. We love you for it. If you're not a subscriber, please consider smashing that subscribe button. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. So, let's get into it. Okay guys, let's talk about our tools. Number one, we have some fancy things. We have a whistle, we have e-collar, we have bumpers, and we have a leash with a chain collar on it. Okay, let's boil this right down. If you have a retrieving object like this and a leash, even with a flat collar, you can train your dog. Because really what we want them to do is no sit, hear, heal, kennel, quiet, no, hold, and fetch. Let me talk about um, the retrieving objects. So when we have little puppies, a lot of times if we have a light bumper like this, we cut the rope off and we just use this. We don't want them carrying it around by the rope, right? So you can also start puppies off with a rolled up sock. You can also start puppies off with a paint roller. Okay, they don't have much weight to them, but you can toss them over there 10 feet and puppies can chase them down and they're really light and they just pick them up and carry them around. So that's a great way to start. But I recommend you get some bumpers and you can order these online. You can go to your local sporting goods store and you want to get two or three of these bumpers so that you can have some spares and you can train your dog. This is going to be what we teach our dogs to love. And we're gonna bring out their prey drive with our bumper. Now don't get me wrong, we also use birds. But me personally, I like to turn young dogs onto birds and just for a day or two, but they have a tendency to get crazy and create a bunch of bad habits, especially not coming back. So what I like to do is make sure that they know about birds and then take them off birds until we get their obedience done and then we get them through force fetch and maybe even a little bit of collar conditioning and then put them back on birds. Today I brought birds with me and we're going to get them out and I'm going to show you how the dogs react to birds and then how I can reliably get them to come back and to sit down and to give them to me. So it's not going to be a fight, right? So anyway, back to our tools. Here is the leash, okay? I recommend getting a double leash. Um, they're just easier on your hands. And then I like a chain collar, which you slip down in here like this. And then you put on the dog like this. And then when you lift it up, it goes there. And when you drop it down, it goes like that. Okay, do you see that? That's how you want it on your dog. So up, down, up, down. If you put it on the other way, this is what happens. It goes up and it stays up, okay? Now, this collar isn't meant to choke your dog. This collar is to be, it, you just use like popping motions. You just go pop, pop, pop. You look at my last video, or the video just before this one, and I use this a lot, and you can see how we do sit here and heal. So if you have these things, you can train your dog. Now, for more advanced training, we use our whistle and we teach our dogs to come back to the whistle. Three blasts, like that. That means come back. To make our dog sit, we go, all right. 
Now, I really like this whistle. This is the Roy Gonya with the P in it and the Mega on it. So you can order these online, look them up, Roy Gonya, Mega Whistle. The, if you're gonna be a hunter or run hunt test, this is more than enough whistle for you. I guarantee it. So I also have um, a blue Dallas Sassy that I use when I run field trials because it reaches out further and field trials have ridiculous distances like 300 and 400 yards and so it's a totally different game but anyway this is real nice you can also get this without the mega like for hunting hanging it on your lanyard with your duck and goose calls and but once your dog learns this sound then they'll respond to that okay the other thing is is we we use electric collars now the question is why do we use electric collars well because we work our retrievers off leash most of the time once you get through basic training they're off leash so they're at a distance so there's a lot of reasons to have the electric collar. First of all, we reinforce commands the dogs already know, which is sit, hear, and heal. And sit, whether it's with the whistle or sit just through the voice, you can reinforce that with the electric collar. There's a whole system on how to collar condition. And I already have one video on that. So... I think the title is, Oops, I Shocked My Dog. Go back and watch that and learn about how to collar condition your dog. But this is a really great tool. It's been abused and it's been used incorrectly a lot. And so just like any tool, as long as you're using it correctly and you're educated about it, then it's going to be a very useful, good tool for you to use. Um, my dogs all know that they have to wear this before we train. It's kind of like putting your football helmet on for practice even when you're not hitting that day, right? It's just part of the uniform. Um, of course, we have a transmitter for this, which is right here. This model goes up to 127. I have a different dial on it that goes 0 to 8. And whatever it says as far as numbers go, it just is. And I usually run my dogs on three, three out of eight. So it's pretty low, right? Today, I'm gonna to turn this collar on and I'm gonna show you what the different levels feel like. And this is gonna be my recommendation to you. Let's just get into that. Okay, this collar turns on by pushing the button in the back. And the green light comes on right there. And if we turn this up, you probably can hear it going off. Okay, transmitter's on. This is all the way up to 127, so you can hear this. It's just on Nick. Here's continuous. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna turn this down to one, one. That says 11 on here. I'm gonna push this button. Yeah, can't even feel it. Can't even feel one. Let's go to two. Let's see what two does. Oh, wrong button. Okay, I can feel that. It's just like tick, 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 tick. Um, that's probably less pressure than sticking your tongue on a 9 volt battery, okay? We're going to go to 3. This is the level that I have been training my dogs on, okay? Oh yeah, I can feel that. Okay, so, yeah, okay, okay. 
Yes. So you should learn the timing of pushing the button and when the juice gets here, there is a slight delay. It doesn't really matter if you're just training a duck dog, but if you're going to advance up to master hunter level and go into field trials and those kind of things, you really want to know. So just turn it down to a two, push the button and feel the timing on that. Okay. I have this on continuous and a two is a good level to learn your collar. You should definitely shock yourself before you shock your dog. Okay, just saying. So, give that a go. See how the light comes on? Yep, yep. Um, anyway, great tool. Get educated about this and it can really help you out. It can also save your dog's life. There's plenty of situations where a dog is going to go chase something and you want to be able to get them back. Whether it's a deer or a rabbit or another dog or whatever. You want to be able to say here, boink, and they go and turn around and come back. So those are our basic tools. Let's go ahead and get Maddie out and we'll get some birds out and let's see what she thinks of getting on these birds again. Now she's had some birds in the past, usually dead ducks, um, and she's had live pigeons one time. Today we're going to use live pigeons and we're going to just let her kind of relax. She's been in a lot of training. She's been in force fetch. She's been in collar conditioning. She's had a lot of pressure on her. Birds, especially live pigeons, really help bring their attitude up. And that's what we're looking for today. We're really looking to advance their attitude about training and not just have it be about pressure. And the best thing is once we get through the yard, which is basic obedience and force fetch and collar conditioning then we're gonna just be into throwing marks for the dogs for you know doing retrieving and teaching them to retrieve in the water and retrieve on land so that's our main objective with getting through the yard so that then we can just elevate their spirits by just doing retrieves and they can run and they can go get birds and that's what they really live for okay guys that's it that's the end of the video thank you for being with us on this channel if you're not yet a subscriber please smash that subscribe button give us a thumbs up if you liked it and please leave a comment down below there's got to be some questions Go ahead and put them in there. Don't be afraid. I'll answer them for you. Look forward to bringing you new content each week right here on this channel. Love and light, my friends. Ciao.